for the 2020 Defensive Player of the Year is just starting to heat up. While this year's contenders feature various styles of disruption, it's really come down to who can disrupt you up front. TJ Watt will maneuver through the right side of your line and drop back in coverage. Aaron Donald will chop up your guards and smash you directly in the mouth. And then, there's Miles Garrett, who will attack you from anywhere. We've seen these formidable forces wreck game plans for years with their own distinctive styles, but we haven't really seen a style quite like Miles Garrett's. While his massive 6'4", 272 pound frame would suggest he relies on power, his freakish athleticism, bend, and twitchiness have created a size speed weapon of mass destruction that leads the NFL in sacks. The early part of his career was about establishing consistent dominance. He's the only pass rusher with at least a 12% pressure rate every year since he entered the league in 2017. But then last year, he took the next step towards explosive dominance and led the league in pressure rate until his six-game suspension. He has all the tools to win. So what's stopping him from completely taking over and putting the race out of reach? Well, despite his deadly size and power, Miles prefers to win with speed and bend. He wants to beat you to the edge, then dip down almost parallel to the ground and roll right into the quarterback. It's not something you see a lot because almost nobody else can do it. Especially at his size, it's a truly elite quality that separates him from just about everybody else. When most pass rushers try to beat an offensive lineman around the edge, they have a collection of counter moves to defeat the lineman's hands. Miles is so quick and bendy that the laws of physics simply do not apply to him. For anybody else his size, getting to this position means you're going nowhere. Your frame, especially your ribs, are open for business, and Jaron Christian has free access to take your angle up the field and away from the quarterback's launch point. But as Christian contacts Miles, he begins to bend around the corner and there's barely a surface for him to push on. This is both Miles' gift and his curse. He can roll out of bed and pick up a sack just by breaking the human being rules of the universe. So it hasn't been as necessary for him to develop counters off his go-to move, which could take his game to the next level and win him Defensive Player of the Year. The Browns love to position him in a 9 technique far outside the tackle so he can take advantage of his speed and force the slower lineman to play in more space. A lot of guys take deep vertical sets to choke off that speed, but Miles' bend is so insane he can usually still get around them. He knows they'll be setting outside since he almost never goes in, and cause he's threatening the edge, they'll shoot their hand so he can't take the corner. But too often, when Miles sees they are in position, he over-anticipates them shooting their hands and uses his chop move as a counter before there's anything to counter. Between the pass rusher and tackle, whoever shoots their hands first almost always loses the rep since the other can then counter. It's essentially a game of chicken. When Miles uses his hands first, the chop is designed to counter as if the tackle shot his first. So Miles really isn't chopping or countering anything. When he misses with his chop, it throws off his timing and balance giving the tackle more surface area to push him away from the spot. Teams are studying this film, and see he's often using his counter moves too early in the down which disrupts his timing, so they're installing game plans to bait out his hands prematurely to have a fighting chance in hell. But Miles is so incredibly gifted, it often just doesn't really matter. Take this example against the Cowboys backup tackle Terrence Steele. To flush out Miles' hands early, Steele uses what's called a ghost technique to give Miles the impression he's shooting his hands to force the counter. You can see Steele knows the the chop is coming, so he puts his right arm down so Miles has nothing to chop at, then he sticks his ribs to maneuver him upfield. He wants Miles to use his chop to force himself off balance so Steele can guide him out of position. And it actually kind of works. But Miles has another gear that you cannot stop even when you know it's coming. When his chop misses, look how his right leg crosses through his body to reset his angle and hips towards the QB. Here, he's in a bad position. Steele's plan has worked perfect. But Miles has a different set of skills, skills that make him a nightmare. He hits Dak and forces him to fumble. While teams are studying his film, he's also studying their film and understands how offensive linemen are good going to attack him. If they're trying to flush out his hands early, he can do the same thing, and even use their own techniques against them. 
against the Washington Blanks, he's working on Jaron Christian again, who stylistically is known as a heavy hitter. He wants to quickly get his hands on you to establish control, so Miles uses a ghost technique of his own. One move we'll later see him use is called Speed to Power. A speed move is a rush aimed at a gap, while a power move is aimed at alignment. Miles starts with his speed path to get Christian to set outside, then pretends to convert his speed to power as he runs straight towards him. But instead of bull rushing him, he uses his own ghost technique to force Christian to shoot his hands and completely miss. O-linemen usually stop their feet when they throw their punch to generate maximum power. So when Christian stops his feet and Miles starts to duck and bend around him, his hands have to land or he is doomed. Miles' plan is so good that he's already dipping under the punch by the time it's thrown. It's still pretty decent hand placement by Christian considering what's happened, but the movement from here to here is straight up elite and downright disgusting. Miles might struggle when countering with his hands, but that does not mean he isn't capable of adapting his rush during the down. Another benefit of him playing the 9 technique is all the time it allows him to decide on the fly how to best pressure the quarterback. As usual, he starts with a speed move to get around the tackle of Raven Clark, but when he sees running back Jonathan Taylor chipping him outside, he converts from speed to power and drives Clark up into the air. The key to a good speed to power move is harnessing the speed you've gathered and transferring it into your power rush. When Miles sees Taylor sliding out to help, watch how he transitions down with incredible pad leverage to hit Clark with maximum force. If he was straight up like he is before he shifts to power, Clark would be able to get under his pads and neutralize his bull rush, but you can see the angle he creates going up through Clark and the force he generates from the ground up. Check how Clark vertically sets straight backwards to meet Miles at the point of his speed attack. The speed threat forces Clark to set too far upfield to make sure Miles doesn't take the edge like he has a million times before, but that coincides with Miles seeing Taylor and Clark's body shifting completely outside so he transitions to power. If he can set up more moves with speed, then attack with power, that would unlock even more of his potential, make him more efficient and more deadly. When he does put it all together, it's absolutely beautiful, and leaves even elite offensive tackles in shambles. When Laramie Tunsil sees Miles lined up in his 9-tech, he assumes he's getting another speed rush. When Miles starts with speed attacking the edge, Tunsil races back with short, quick feet to get himself in between the rush and the ball. But as Miles turns towards him, maybe like he's going to speed to power, Tunsil's feet start to slow down. Miles uses an inside step called a jab step to freeze Tunsil inside, stop his feet, and draw out his hands. Miles knows when he sees those feet, all he has to do is beat Tunsil's outside arm and hip, then he's home scot-free. Instead of over-anticipating Tunsil's hands, he draws out his hands, then uses the chop. The move throws Tunsil completely off balance and all he can do is grab on for dear life. Miles finishes with a rip to weaken his grip and smashes Deshaun Watson for the sack. The entire move put all together is called a speed jab chop rip. And what's impressive is Miles almost looks like a wide receiver releasing off the line, sticking inside to beat the corner up the sideline. He's as athletic as just about any receiver, except he outweighs them by at least 50 pounds. You can see how good he can be when he utilizes more moves within his rush. So he's not just relying on his bend around the edge or over anticipating the tackle's hands, but putting the tackle in conflict to make him shoot his hands so then Miles can counter. He's still this productive without much of an inside move at all. You'll see TJ Watt and Aaron Donald counter back inside all the time, which punishes offensive linemen who set for just one move. It's an area where Miles can significantly improve and goes hand in hand with adapting during the down. When he does go inside, he really just has a spin move that is far from technically polished and can use a lot of work. At this point in his young career, he's more of a you can't stop me even if you know exactly what's coming type guy rather than a technician. But there are obviously examples we just watched that show he does have the tools to develop as the latter. His case for Defensive Player of the Year is a tricky one. When we look at his pressures per game, he averaged 6.5 in weeks 1 through 5, but just 1.5 in weeks 6 through 10. That dip in production could be because of a knee injury he sustained last month, but also shows us that he can get red hot and could turn it back on the rest of the season. 
He still leads the league in sacks and is still squarely in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. He's arguably even the favorite, and though at times he can be a one-trick pony, he's still terrorizing the league. He can line up to the right, he can line up to the left, he can even line up inside. Quarterbacks know pre-snap where he is at all times, but it doesn't matter, because Miles Garrett is coming, and he's coming at you fast. Nice.